Good morning, YouTube land, Facebook land, and our church. I am so excited to be here. I'm glad that you are joining us today. We're praying for you at home that God would bless your heart. We're going to be preaching about the Sermon on the Mount again. This is number 14th installment. And how many know that the greatest sermon preacher that ever preached was Jesus himself? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can't even come close to his style of preaching or his anointing that he had because he was God. And... <laughs> but I hope I can give us some insight of what's going on and what he's trying to say. Yeah. <clears throat> so let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you. We thank you, Lord, that you would be here today. Holy Spirit, move. Let it not be my words but yours. Take a coal from the altar of heaven. Place it upon my lips. Lord, I ask that you would take control of my faculties and let it be about you, not about us. Bless our hearts today with your word. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 through 42. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oath to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither be heaven be it by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. Some of us are getting no hair, so it won't matter. And your no be no, for and your yes be oh, sorry, let your yes be yes. And your no be no, for whatever is more than these is evil is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Today, I'm talking about us being under control. Not of control of the government or control of this person or that person, but being under control of God, being His people. Amen? Amen? Amen. As Christians, we realize that only God can empower us through the Holy Spirit so that we are truly under God's influence and control. How, have you ever been under your own influence and screwed everything up? <laughs> More than once. But when God gives you inspiration and God gives you that, that in your heart to do what is right to do, then it turns out great, and you look good, but you've got to turn around and say, no, I give God the glory, right. not me. Amen? That's right. Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if we're in the Spirit, how many know that there's still a problem sometimes? Oh, yeah. That our, our flesh is strong in us. And that means the human nature of us, right? The part that is us, that is the whole us, sometimes rules us and makes us do things we don't necessarily want to admit. <laughs> We're not always the greatest person at times. Jesus' topic with Matthew 5, 33-42 is control. When we follow Jesus' teaching and allow the Holy Spirit to control us, we find that the following things will be under control. Number one, our lips will be under control. Yeah. Pastor, come on now. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Right? Come on, Pastor. Yeah. Really? It's in the Word. Take it up with Him. Right? Yeah. We have to learn these things. I think that the psalmist had, it, uh, had us pegged when he confessed his need for help with his tongue. Yeah. Amen. Psalms 141 verse 3 says, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. 
keep the door of my lips. In verses 33 through 37, Jesus is dealing with one of the key problems with our lips. It is the problem of telling the truth and not lying. How many know it's really easy to blame it somebody else? Right? It is. And my kids used to say it was Cameron. No, it was Chelsea. So I'd spake them both and I got the right one. That's how I solved it. Or they both got punished. That's how I solved the problem. Yep. It wasn't fair, but it was fair. Because if neither one of them wanted to admit it, I'm like, oh, well, somebody else, so-and-so, just walked in our house and did it then. Hmm. Didn't happen again. Well, sometimes. <laughs> but not very often. But it had muddy footprints. <laughs> <laughs> one time they made me so mad they were fighting. I literally locked them in the bathroom and told them to duke it out. At least it's on the low millium. I can clean it up. <laughs> so frustrated I just couldn't stop them they wouldn't stop mm -hmm. then I did tie them up with my belt one time I tied it in a big knot and made them stand there and hug each other the whole time <laughs> <laughs> I duct taped them once too together yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say well, I was a perfect father I'm just saying <laughs> I was frustrated nobody's ever been frustrated before oh, yeah. poor boy <laughs> In this passage, in verse 33, in this passage, Jesus is not talking about swearing as we think of it as in today's text. He is not referring to talking, taking the name of Jesus, the Lord, in vain. Although this is a sin, filthy language is definitely wrong. We know that, right? Yeah. Because if you called somebody something, you can never take it back. And if we call somebody something that we probably shouldn't, or we say something, then words are always out there. They can never come back. That's right. And, and, and we know that that's not right. We say things in frustration and her anger. And, 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 and I was telling Judith that I didn't want to preach this sermon today. Hmm? That's been three weeks in a row. I didn't want to preach the sermon. Yeah. But you got it. But I have to. <laughs> But I can do it in a loving way and not a chastising way because, because I'm flush as much as you are. Yeah. I'm no different than anybody sitting out there at all when it comes to the fleshly part. Some of us have better control than that. Some of us lived a lot longer and learned from their mistakes. I was one of those children, you told me not to do it, I was going to do it. Mm. I was a precocious child. <laughs> polite way of thinking. I was being polite, how I said it. My mom said I was a hellion. <laughs> my grandma told me when she gave me to my mother, I was going to die. <laughs> Exodus 27 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. That is, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you, have, you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, that hurts. The last thing you want to do, am I right or am I wrong, is to, to show grace to somebody, to the hearers, when you're frustrated. How about when you've been hurt deeply? We've all been there. Don't say you haven't, because then I'm going to say, right, really, uh-huh. Okay, we've all been there. We've all been hurt by the tongue. The, the, the tongue is sharper than a two-edged sword. God warned us that in the Old Testament, didn't he? He said it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Why? Because it cuts to the bone. It can literally destroy somebody. I talked about this last week when a lady said, I wish you were never born. You're worthless just like your father to this kid. And I literally saw him shrink. I literally saw him shrink and disappear. And I was so heartbroken because have I ever done that to my kids in a moment of frustration? 
I hope not, but I know I'm not perfect. Lord, for kids, forgive me if I ever did that. I, I should have never done that if I did. I can, my kids are here. I can say that. And we should make strides to not do that again and build them and edify them up instead of tear them down. Tearing people down was, is the worst thing you can do, but lifting them up is the hardest thing you can do. If I want to see a negative thing, I can point out one negative thing in everybody in this place. <laughs> Real easy. But it's harder to find four positive things about every person sitting in this church. That's a reality of truth. Okay? I'm not saying I'm thinking negative, but it's easier to come up with negativity than it is ever is positivity. How about in a relationship? Of marriage. That's, that's where the true rubber meets the road if you can control your tongue or not. And how many know the ones that we love the most, we hurt the most with our mouth? Oh. And we do. We don't mean to, but we, we feel free enough to express how we feel, but we don't realize the damage that can happen in that process. So... We also need to be slow to listen. Part of the problem is we're so, Judith and I were talking about this this morning, is that it's so easy to be thinking of the answer that you want to give, you forget to hear the whole context of what was being said. That's right. So then the fence can actually be on you, not on them. Yeah. They could be saying it a whole different way, but in our ears we heard it one way and we stopped listening at that point. That's right. yeah. And we were coming up with a defense or, or a counterattack Instead of stepping back and shutting up and hearing the whole thing and seeing the expression on their hearts and their face, they could be having tears running down their cheeks and being truthful and saying, I love you, but you only heard the one thing that you took offense, and then boom, that's it. Hmm. Pastor, you're really digging. No. So let's learn to step back. Step back and listen. Yes. Listen. Sometimes an answer like this is the better than never saying anything else. Let me think about that. Yeah. Let me ponder this for a moment. Do you mind if we take up this conversation at a later time so I can process this situation. How much conflict would we avoid if we were adults enough to do that? Yeah. Or let it be done. Got real quiet. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hard thing to talk about. That's why I didn't want to talk about this today. Lord, really? It's, it's needed. What is the stake here with the passage is that truthfulness and the honesty and the integrity of our lips is more important than being right yes. in us. <clears throat> Nobody likes being wrong. Yeah. And what they're saying, you might not be wrong. They might not even be saying you're wrong. You just took it wrong. Amen. And when we take it wrong, then the whole thing's blown out of proportion, and 15 people later off the phone know more about the situation than you do. Yeah. Because they're going to get the phone call from the other person, hopefully not, Yeah. hearing the other side of the story. How you know, I love Paul Harvey. Anybody like Paul Harvey? Like the rest Paul. of the story? I loved it. Yeah. I missed that on the airways. This is Paul Harvey. Good day. <laughs> Can't say it like him. Nobody could. No. Good day. But I loved it. Because yeah. he had some stories. Yeah. See, Jesus is telling us the rest of the story is where we're going to end up. Yeah. If we follow these things. Yeah. He's playing Paul Harvey before Paul Harvey ever was here. Yeah. <laughs> 
will inherit the kingdom when we learn these simple things. Yeah. Vows or oaths are not uncommon in the Old Testament or the New Testament. They're not uncommon today. Yeah. These were to be done seriously and with absolute truthfulness when it's involved. If we look at Numbers chapter 30, verse 2, it says, If a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all the proceeds out of his mouth. Boy, that's not actually easy, is it? It's easier to say than to follow through. To contract, yeah. Even with me, it's hard sometimes. How many know life gets in the way of fulfilling some of those things? <laughs> it does. Genesis 14, 22 through 23 says, But Abraham said to the king of Solomon, or Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. Second yeah. Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 says, Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul, that to spare you I came no more to Corinth. Not that we have dominion over your faith, but our fellow workers for your joy, for by faith you stand. Yeah. Matthew 26, 63 through 64 says, But Jesus kept silent, and the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God, Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, It is as you said. <laughs> Nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And they picked up stones. <laughs> yep, they were angry. Jesus is at his trial, and he, at, he was asked to swear by the living God, and he does give an answer. So why then did Jesus say not to swear? These are two reasons. First, swearing or using of oaths was a far too common thing in the days of Jesus. People would use an oath for things that didn't matter to them. They had no plans of ever following. You ever been around somebody like, oh yeah, I'll get that done? Never that done. <laughs> and you just shake your head, really? I might as well just done it myself. Yeah. Anybody ever been that way? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many of you just quit asking and you just start doing it yourself? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, I remember one time I told my wife, hey, I'll do the laundry. She thought, hey, great. I did the laundry. All my socks and undershorts were pink. Yeah. <laughs> And I wore pink socks and undershorts for a long time. Until she got sick of seeing pink all the time. And then she, she never let me do that again. You're smart, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't mean to. I was just doing laundry. I didn't care. I was just being a guy. Trying to help out. And I got in trouble for it. Amen. Hope you like pink. I didn't mind. I'm man enough to wear pink. Nobody's seeing me. your underwear. Yeah, I'm not going to show my undershorts to nobody you. anyways. If they're that close, they better leave. <laughs> First swearing or uh, using of oaths was a far too common thing in the days of Jesus. So we look at this that we're not to do something that we don't mean. Right. Would you take um, much stock in a person using an oath... Uh, verifying that he was going to wear a red shirt today or right after the price is right she was going to do the mopping mopping the floor that he or she was going to do their homework we had to follow up with our kids we learned chelsea had this plan of sometimes she said i'm sorry baby i got to tell them this story <laughs> she she said i got all my homework done and we find out she was behind in math and then she said, I hate math. I can't do math. And then Cameron, he's like the math whiz. He's doing high school math in 
in junior high. And he just looked at her and he goes, here, I'll show you how to do it. She goes, I don't understand. He goes, you can't be that stupid. And then the fight would start. <laughs> <laughs> she still runs to him for math problems. Now I know who so does you. Mama, too. Yeah. I'll tell you who's smarter than anybody about math in this church, I believe, is Andre. He teaches math at a yeah. college level. If you ever have a math problem you want to know, yeah. talk to him. Got it to me. <laughs> that man, that's why him and Cameron get along so well. <clears throat> Cameron would only understand, or Andre, the uh, what's that one day, uh, I am, or whatever, I can't remember it. <laughs> Pi Day, that's oh, what it is. Pie. Oh, yeah. March 14th, yes, mm -hmm. Pi Day. I don't understand it, but they do. <laughs> According to James Montgomery Boyce, the second reason provision of the proper use of an oath by a, the people of Christ's time was worse. It was evasive swearing, meaning they swear just to avoid. People who were afraid to swear by the name of the Lord because they were not telling the full truth began to swear uh, by things, and because mere things were not thought to be as significant as the name of God, this second class of oath was not considered to be binding. In our text, Jesus gives some examples of the way people swore or gave oaths. Verse 34, by heaven, that is the throne of God. Verse 35, it was by earth, that is the footstool of God. Number 35 also, Jerusalem. That is the city of the great king, the Lord Jesus Christ. And number th verse 36 says, by the head. The head can't change natural things, even your hair color. Mm -hmm. Instead of using an oath to convince people of our honesty, Jesus just said, you, uh, we're to be honest with our words. That's not always easy to do. Let your yes be a yes, and your no be a no. Become more black and white in some of those areas. Well, I might be able to do it. I'll see. If I say I'll see if I can get it done, it's truly, seriously, and I'll see if I can get it done in that manner. I don't know if I can sometimes because I've got a wife that's going here and there and all these things going on in my life. It's And, and pulled this direction, this direction. It's hard sometimes. And I get it. Believe me, I get it. Mm -hmm. I do. I understand where we get in situations we just don't know what to do. Yeah. Maybe we should just start saying, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I try not to make promises. All right, let, let's just say, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have an I don't know than, yeah, I'll do it, and that never gets done. Yeah. Yeah. Or I can't do it. Or I just don't have the time right now. Yeah, honestly. Or I love you very much, but it's just something I can't do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or I have the time and I know I can do it. Why don't I just say yes? Yeah. Why don't I just do it? Yeah. Why don't I just do it? Or maybe if I see a need and I know that I can, I can fulfill that for somebody and, and that I know I can and I don't say anything, it's just as bad as saying maybe. Right. And, and so sometimes if we have the ability to do something, we should, if somebody needs 20 bucks for gas and you got a $20 bill on you, is $20 really going to stop you from living? I mean, yes, we're all on a little bit of fixed income, but if a brother needs 20 bucks, I'm going to give a brother 20 bucks. How about when the Lord says, hey, you know what, take 50 bucks out of your pocket and give it to this person. Mm -hmm. And you look in your wallet and that's the last 50. <laughs> that means i got to go to the bank or i got to wait until payday. Really? Do you have everything you need? Yeah. Well. well. <laughs> Is the 50 bucks really going to kill you? No. No. How about you get a check in the mail for $200 after you gave that 50 bucks? 
Maybe God has a plan to bless you and he's just testing you. <laughs> Pastor, how many blessings did I walk away from? Now you get close. <laughs> I'm, I've been there myself, I'm telling you. One time I gave money out of my pocket, my wife thought I was crazy, and if we don't have the money, I said, I gotta do it. Yeah. I did it. We didn't have the money. Literally, we needed that $20 to buy milk, bread, stuff for the kids. Next morning, she puts on her work coat, reaches in her pocket to grab her gloves out, and out popped a $100 bill. Right out of her pocket. Check it out again. So for that $20, we got a 500% return. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't he the provider? Yeah. Doesn't he make a way when there seemeth to be no way? If we can't trust him, who can we trust? If he has not proven to be faithful, he sent his son just like he said he would. He fulfilled his oath, his word to us. He's bound by his own laws. He can't lie to us. He can't change what he said. So we need to be more like the Father. Become more like the Father. What we say is what we mean, not what we mean to say. Don't live life with regrets of things that could have been and should have done. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. You ever heard that before? Yeah. I raise my kids with, for every action, there's a reaction, whether it be positive or negative, right, right. is on you. Sometimes you can't control how somebody's going to react, even if it was a good thing. Yeah. But most of the time it's going to be a positive if it's a positive thing. Most of the time it's going to be a negative if it's a negative thing. Now, there's been times Chelsea has, and Cameron have fretted to tell me something, and then I don't even, like, okay. That's, did you learn something? What is wrong with Dad? They go around to Mom. He should have blown up like he always does, and he didn't. <laughs> it's called I'm maturing. <laughs> Trying to be more patient. <laughs> Maturity is hard. Answered their prayer. To do. It answered their prayer, yeah, because they didn't want to blister it or anything or chew it out. If we look in Leviticus 24, 19 through 20, it says, If a man causes disfiguration of his neighbor, as has, has done, so shall it be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has caused disfiguration of a man, so it shall be done to him. Romans 13, 4 says, For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. According to the Lord Jesus, the rule of vengeance, eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth, was for the government and not for the individuals. It wasn't meant that if, Jerry, if you punch me in the nose, I'm supposed to punch you back. Lord forbid if he did. Oh. That would hurt. Silly me. <laughs> if I say something, uh, if, I, if I have a problem and I slap somebody, I better look to get decked. Right? Yeah. Oh, come on. We know that he, if somebody slapped you, What's your first reaction? I know what mine is. I'm going to punch him as hard as I can. Would be the first thought in my head. Just natural. What the heck are you doing? Right? Boom! Be a reflex. But in honesty, what Christ is talking about, and i got to break this down for you, what he's trying to talk about is he's saying that if somebody hurts you, you are not to just react and hurt back. It's not attack, 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 attack. And it's not force with force with force. It's not war. We need to be peacemakers, not war 
enablers. <laughs> See, enabling somebody to do something is just as bad as you doing something to them. Yeah. Oh, that hurts to just say that. If I enable my kids to react a certain way and keep not correcting that, then it's my fault, not theirs. How about allowing people to put you down, you enabled them to continue to do so. Mm -hmm. right. How about saying, why are you doing that? Yeah, why, are you doing that? why are you talking like that? I love you. What have I done to hurt you? What, what, have, what have I truly done? Because if I have, I want to confess my forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness right now because that's not worth it. Yeah. See, when you start stopping something instead of enabling it, mm -hmm. there could be a whole different, there could be freedom. How many yeah. would like to have freedom in friendships instead oh, yeah. of having boundaries in friendships? Yeah. Right? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to say, I love you so much? I know that you're going through a hard time. Yeah. Let's pray about it. Yeah. Instead of sitting there and stewing about it and just rehashing it. All that does is bring it to a higher boil. Yeah. You know how a pot, when you turn up, you keep turning it up, keep turning it up, finally it's going to boil, boil over, and you're probably going to be one of the victims in the end. If you keep stoking that fire... Pastor, why are you going so deep here? Jesus ripped the band-aid off. Let's go ahead and figure it out. It's the text for today. <laughs> how do we react or respond is how we will be treated. Yeah. If you respond in a negative manner, guess what happens? Then you're just as much at fault. Yeah. They goaded you into it. Therefore, don't be influenced by other things other than God and His Spirit, is what God, Jesus is trying yeah. to say. Don't be influenced by things other than the Holy Spirit. Well, we already know that the Holy Spirit's necessary for us to function yeah. properly in a godly manner. Yeah. Right? We, yeah. we can could, we could have the spirit of the Antichrist, total chaos. We can have that... How many's ever been around a situation that's like the Antichrist? Mm -hmm. Absolute chaos. Oh yeah. There's people that live that way, and I don't know how they can. To not have any peace, not to have any rest in God, not to have any joy in life, not to enjoy life, but to fret and stew and worry and anger and all these things, all it does is make you and everybody else around you miserable. I'm not picking on anybody. We all have a pessimistic, pessimistic side. How many know that? Yeah. We all have a side where we can we know we can light the torch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can light that match and it be like dynamite when it's done. Yeah. And it explodes. And guess what? When there's something like that, it's catastrophic and it can't be fixed. Yeah. And it hurts more than the individual you want. Exactly. <laughs> And it hurts more people than you wanted it to. Exactly. The ones we love the most, I was telling Judith this, are the ones we hurt the most. Yeah, that's true. Shame on you. Why do we hurt? Because we're hurting. That means we have unresolved problems in our life that we haven't or we refuse to or haven't recognized that we must give to the Lord. Go to the altar and lay it at His feet and say, I can't do this because it's not what I want. I want you. Amen. I need you, Father in heaven, yeah. to step into my situation. Yeah. I need your Holy Spirit to be that healing salve that comes over me and heals that wound. To properly heal a wound has to start from the inside out. You cannot heal a wound properly 
without the he inside healing first so it builds up the scar to protect that and stronger than it was before. That's why they put drain tubes and big wounds so it will promote the healing of it from the inside out. <laughs> If God can't deal with the heart on the inside of man, then healing can never come because you can put a band-aid over anything you want. A lipstick on a pig is still a pig. <laughs> My mom used to say, if the barn needs paint, paint it, meaning your face. Yes. But it doesn't change who you are underneath that. That's right. Jesus can only change what you let him change. Yeah. The Holy Spirit can only guide you and prompt you to receive that yeah. if you're only willing to listen and respond. Yeah. Response is important. How you respond can affect whether it be good or bad. Whether you have joy or sorrow. <coughs> or you have healing, or you have destruction. Right. In us is the ability to receive, and all we have to do is give it away yeah. to the Lord. Right. I need Him more than I've ever needed Him. Yeah. You need Him more than you've ever needed Him. See, this is not an easy sermon to talk about because it affects everybody. Everybody, everybody that's ever walked on the face of the earth till this day and forward. Yeah. It affects us all. Yeah. It's an infection of, of self winning over everything else. My justification is more important. And Jesus said, no, your justification through me has got to be the most important thing to you. If we don't yield, we can't be healed. That's right. Come on, say that. If I can't yield, I can't be healed. I can't be healed. So I must yield to the Lord because if I want healing and I want joy in my life and I want peace to be in my life and I want His Holy Spirit to guide me and lead me in everything I do and I want to be a blessing, not a curse. I must yield to be healed. Yes. God just gave me that. I must yield to be healed. Amen. Make that your statement. Right. I must yield to be healed so I don't live and damage others. Broken people break other people. That's right. That's right. Healed people can bring restoration to people. Amen. The church's message should be restoration because that was Christ's message. He said, I came to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captive free. I came to change your situation, not let you be stuck in misery, but I can set you free. Amen. See who the Son sets free is free indeed. That's right. I urge you to to yield it so you can be healed. I'm going to sing this for you. Oh, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. More than anything else. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. That's how simple it is. Live in a, a moment of prayer constantly that I need you, Father, to be more important. Jesus, I need you to be real more than you've ever been. I need you to take control. Not let it be about me, but I want to bless you by blessing others and be as you want me to be. I'm yielding it to you so I can be healed by you. If that's your prayer today, you have the keys to success. 
and the joy and peace and freedom. You can be peacemakers, not peace takers in your life. God bless you. I love you. We're praying for you. Don't leave this place before you come or take a moment to speak to your Father in heaven through his Son, Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.